My country tis of thee, sweet lands of misery, of thee I sing. Land where my brothers died, land of the swollen blood, from every mountain side. Let freedom die. Hey everyone, TFCOM here with another serious video. This video is about everything wrong with America. Um, I know a lot of people want to protest that America's great, but there are many obvious problems that I have witnessed. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people wonder why do Americans love to travel? It's because America is hell. We want out. This is absolute misery here. Here are some reasons why. The education system is absolute trash. Um, an important thing that I am ashamed to admit now. I did not know that Hitler was a bad guy until college. I was taught from a very young age that he was very pro-Jew. Um, and since everyone seemed to hate them because they were the only ones who had money after Germany was very poor, he sent them away to a location where they could keep them safe. The only reason why some died was because there was bad soldiers who believed that Jews were the problem and that America completely blew it out of proportion. I did not know that that was a lie until I was 19. Most people learn that when they're like five. Another thing. I do not know cursive. I was never taught it. Yet, all the tests to get into college have to be done in cursive. Yeah, let's see where that system's stacking up. Um, hmm. I went to an absolute trash school. Um, it was a college prep school, the highest rated in the entire state. My first day walking in, I saw a teacher get stabbed and rushed to the ambulance. No one freaked out. They just kept walking. There was cops at every door, drug dogs all over the place. Once a week, we were thrown into our lockers as they patted us down and searched us. There was always at least one person who got pulled away and arrested. I was taught to carry around a knife, at least a knife, to survive through the school day. And I had had to use it on more than one occasion. We were a prep school, yet I knew nothing to prepare me for college. When I went to college, I was years behind everyone else. The test to get into college requires you to know trigonometry and sine and cosine and tangent. I had never heard of these things until the test was pre presented in front of me. I was a straight-A student from kindergarten, um, and yet I was not accepted into the cl school closest to me. The college would not accept me. They said my grades were too low. When I finally found a college that would accept me, I was put in remedial classes despite the fact that I had straight A's. If you want to see the true irony in that, I was accepted into Yale, the highest school in the world, the best ranked school in the world, but no other schools would accept me. And they weren't even going to put me on a penalty to put in remedial. I had the highest grade possible 
for my school district, which was a 3.99. And all the colleges nearby required a 4.0. It was impossible to get into them. And I don't mean as in, I didn't try, believe me. I worked my ass off and I got the highest grade physically possible. And it was not enough. We were known as suicide school because we had one window and people were constantly jumping out of it. We had bars on our doors and people still broke in. Our rival school constantly attacked our school. Gunfights, knife fights, fist fights. At least once a week they were there attacking us. When their school got shut down for the lowest test scores in the state, they thought it was a good idea to, look, to move them to our school. Many people died. I'm sure people are still dying every day at that school. No one cares. My senior year, after they had brought the other school in, we were changed to the lowest graded school in the state. We went from the highest to the lowest. And they blamed our school, despite the fact that it was the new students who came in from the, old, old, from the old school. It took me an hour to get to school every day, but I chose that school because the school closest to me was on lockdown practically 24-7 due to shootings. I am considered upper, upper middle class, and yet I can't afford to eat most days. Drug deals were insanely common in my neighborhood. It was so common that no one even batted an eye. Broken glass and gunshots were the only ways I could sleep at night. When I moved to my current location, I couldn't sleep for a month because it was too quiet. I started drinking um, by my own choice when I was 10 years old. Yet, I had, al had alcohol fairly freely since I was a few months old. I have been shot and stabbed many times. I have been run over by both a car, well a truck in specific, truck and a school bus. I have had many days where I could not go to school because the school bus was too afraid to go into my neighborhood to pick me up. I am considered rich by so many people, yet I've never had health insurance. I have had many heart attacks, many stab wounds and everything, but I stay home. I find a way to bandage it up myself and keep going. I have broken nearly every bone in my body, yet I've only been to the hospital twice. When I ran away for a week, I came back coated in blood, stab wounds, sh gun w gunshots, drenched with mud and rain. My mom simply said I was too dirty to come inside, and I better clean up with a hose. When I had a seizure at school, people clapped.
I graduated high school barely knowing how to add. I still use my fingers today. A teacher failed me in college because I would not have sex with him. And no one did anything about it. I won many awards in high school for good grades and such. Yet they all mysteriously got misplaced and I never received a single one. I was lucky if I ate once a day, yet my parents had steak and lobster. Homeless people would buy me food because they felt bad for me. This is America, guys. This is the land of the free, the home of the brave. It's not... It's not free. It's not love. It's not life. I don't know how I lived this long. I'm always lucky if I wake up the next day. Millions of health problems. Millions of mental problems. Millions and millions of dangers around me every minute. If I wake up, I am blissful. I do not do homework when I am assigned it. I very much procrastinate and do it the day of. Because I don't know if I'm going to make it to that day. Why do Wednesday's homework when I may not even live through Monday? I never had an EpiPen because my parents could not afford it, despite my millions of allergies. I was taken off very important medication for my heart because my mom could not afford it. We did not receive full free lunch at school, which is a program in the US to help insanely poor families. We did not receive free lunch or even discounted lunch. And when that change went through, I didn't eat for a few weeks. Eventually, friends started buying me lunch because they knew, even at lunch being 20 cents, I could not afford to eat. I went around the school begging for pennies because it cost 10 cents to print out a page and I had an essay due. People called me rich kid and beat me up daily simply because I had a house. I was constantly told daily that I was a waste of money, that it was too expensive to take care of me, and my mom wished I would just leave. I never got food stamps because I didn't have enough money to drive to the building to request them. I usually woke up covered in bites and bruises because our house had million, had dozens of bugs and rats and that was just it. 
constantly had giant gaping holes and cracks in the walls and leaks and everything else you can think of. Yet we didn't have enough money to pay for them. Despite home insurance saying they would pay for them, they never did. I could never stay after school for clubs because the bus was the only way I could get home and it didn't run past a certain time. We had a field trip in high school that was worth three-fourths of our grade. I couldn't go on it because I couldn't drive there. I did not get my driver's license until I was 19 because I couldn't afford the classes. And in fact, I'm a lucky one. Many of my friends in their mid-twenties still do not have a license because they cannot afford it. We all drive. Probably a majority of drivers do not have their driver's license and are driving illegally. If we were to get in a crash, they would not be able to pay for our medical bills like is required by law. You can probably hear the emotion in my voice. I'm trying very, very hard <sighs> to be understandable here and not burst out in tears. I thought I was filthy rich until I realized some people eat every day. I thought I was very fat because I had been told it by my parents until I was admitted for being anorexic. I learned that I should lick up my own blood because I'm not getting any more. If I was ever in an accident, I have a card in my wallet that says not to call the ambulance because we cannot afford the bills. I have never voted despite wanting to because there's no way for me to get to the polling stations. Many jobs have considered hiring me until they see my hometown. They are too afraid to hire someone who lived in a gang neighborhood. I have had other gang members attack me because they believe I was part of that other gang. I lived in their area, I must have been part of them. I have had to walk on a broken leg because I could not afford crutches. Welcome to America. Everyone talks about how America is so multicultural and loving. 
yet. I was beat up for my accent millions of times to the point where I now hide it. If you have saw my one video about my real accent, that took insane amount of courage. I was scared to death. I cried for hours after that, worried about what you guys would think. There are many days I have not taken my medication that keeps me alive. I do not take heart medication despite having many, many heart problems because I cannot afford it. I do not have an inhaler despite having asthma. So if I have an asthma attack, I will simply die. I do not have an EpiPen despite having millions of allergies. So if I eat something I'm allergic to, I will die. I do not have seizure medication, despite having epilepsy. So if I seize, I will die. I cannot even afford band-aids. I was taught that when you have a headache, you should drink because then it will get rid of it. If you're drunk, you don't notice the pain. I am still underage and cannot legally drink. Yet, I have drank for at least 10 years now. I was an alcoholic at age 11. I tried drugs and ceased uncontrollably. My family just stepped over me on the ground because they knew there was nothing they could do about it. I live 100% on student loans because no place will hire me even when I take out my piercings and dye my hair. They will not hire me due to lack of experience. Yet I cannot get experience because they do not hire me. I was told that if I went to college, I would be disowned because my mother didn't ever want me to dream. She believed it was far too expensive to even hope to get a job. Fast food was the only way. And I just would hope that I worked enough hours to eat that week. And if I didn't, it was my fault. When I told my mother I wanted to work at an abuse shelter to take care of victims of abuse and gang activity, she told me it was moronic. I would never have money. I would starve to death. And that I would simply be killed by the perpetrators of the abuse. When I walk for more than five minutes, I start to shake and nearly pass out because my blood sugar is so low due to lack of food. I am $60,000 in debt and I'm only 20.
$60,000 in debt, and I'm only 20. I am constantly harassed because you are expected to get married at 18, and if you are not, then you are a waste of space. If you do not have a kid by the time you are 19, you are a waste of space. The only reason I was able to leave the country, even from two months, was because the school paid for it. There was no other way I could have gone. Both of my parents, and their parents, and their parents, have all served in the military. And we are all starving on street corners. These are soldiers fought for America's freedom, who fought to keep us safe, alive, happy, fought for the ideals that everyone thinks America stands for, and they're pushed aside when they can no longer work. I am blind in one eye, 80% blind in the other, yet I have not received much needed surgery. When the doctors tell me the cost, I simply have to shake my head. I will get eye exams to see if it gets worse, but it's simply out of curiosity. There's nothing that can be done for it. I keep swords and pepper spray and knives around me at all times because I'm afraid to leave without them. I have been beaten up by cops many times. I've actually had one break down my door and throw me to the ground despite there being no threat in the house. They were simply bribed by a neighbor. I have been molested by cops. They claimed it was a pat down, and the state believed them. I have been raped millions of times, it seems. It was actually six. And the perpetrators are still walking. One was a teacher. I'm sorry guys, I really am I'm not trying to do dramatic pauses or anything. I'm just collecting myself so I don't start sobbing on camera. Because I was taught if you cry, you die. I have had teachers give me something I'm allergic to just to see my reaction. I'm allergic to nuts, and they would grind up nuts and mix it into stuff so that you could not tell it was there until you took a bite. School nurses are the biggest joke in America. They can usually give you a band-aid, but that is it. It doesn't matter if your arm fell off. All they can give you is a band-aid. They can't even call for medical attention. 
If your arm fell off, here's a band aid, get back to class. Otherwise, you'll be considered skipping. If you skip more than three days, you are automatically failed. I live in a location where men who have never done drugs in their entire life and never plan to die and the cops simply write it as an overdose. My brother-in-law is completely clean. They found his body with a needle in his arm and many wounds. It was obvious that he had been killed and the needle was simply stuck in. Cops never investigated it and simply wrote it off as a drug overdose because of the location we lived in and it was so common there. I'm sorry. I'm really trying. I'm really trying not to sob here. But I'm bringing up a lot of personal stuff. I live in a location where my fiancé was killed and people laughed at me for getting upset about it. Said I should have expected it. In my area, you're lucky if you live a day. So why would you be upset when someone dies? <laughs> it's like being upset that a fish died. It's gonna happen. You knew it. The Child Protective Services in my country are absolute hell. I was beaten daily, covered in bruises and cuts and wounds of all sorts. And yet, they always wrote it off because they were bribed by the cops to do so. And the cops were bribed by my parents. My brother currently has straight A's, but only because my mother keeps changing his grades in the system. He has never done a single thing of homework. He attends class when he feels like it, but he has straight A's. When I made anything less than a 95, I was beaten for it. My grades were never changed. She says this is because women who make good grades It's required, if you don't make good grades, then you're a whore. Men, how could they make less grades than a woman? They don't have to do work, though, because they're just there to graduate, just because they have to by law. You know, men can skip everything, doesn't matter. They'll get a good job. Women must work their asses off. Because otherwise, they're worth nothing. My mom still treats me that way, despite the fact that I am now male. Um, as far as she is concerned, I am still a woman in absolute trash because I do not have a child. Despite the fact that even before hormone treatments, I was infertile due to many medical issues that were never treated when I was younger because of money. A friend of mine that I visited recently had a roof on his house and everyone in the room was awestruck and taking pictures because we had never seen something like that.
This is America. America the brave. America the filthy rich. Oh, the white privilege. The white male privilege. I'm not denying that people of different races are treated even worse than the whites. Believe me, they are. But if a white is treated this badly, then what does that say for everyone else? Yes, we are treated better than you. We admit that. But we're still not treated well enough. We should all be equal. I will not doubt that. I will not deny that. Everyone should be equal. But if the richest people in your community cannot even afford to eat, then what does that say about America? What does that say about the land of the free, the home of the brave, the beautiful, beautiful world of wonder, the world where I turn on my faucet and black sludge falls out, and the country simply says, it was an accident. It's safe to eat, drink though, it just looks bad. And people die, and they keep repeating, it just looks bad, it's really safe to drink. What does that say about our country? A place where people are losing teeth daily because they cannot afford basic dental insurance. What does that say to where 80% of people my age have attempted suicide at least twice? What does that say to where 50% of my class did not make it to graduation because they were shot or killed themselves. What does that say when the richest neighborhood ever, other than of course Trump and the filthy 1%, what does it say when the second richest people die? Because they cannot eat. They cannot take care of simple things. There are people dying of the flu. The flu. A cold. Simplest of things possible. Dying daily. Because they cannot get the simplest of medicine. There are people with such horrific migraines because they cannot afford ibuprofen. That they kill themselves because they cannot handle the pain. There are people on the streets. Bleeding on their periods and such, and they cannot afford tampons. I would wrap toilet paper around my underwear, because I could not afford a pad. If it bleeds through, it's awful. That was my only pair of underwear. I guess it has blood on it now. I can't throw it away, because then I would have nothing. We were the rich. We are the rich. We're the rich. And we have nothing. The poorest people in other countries are equal to the rich in our country. They're probably ahead of the rich in our country. You should not say your age online and have people ask you how you made it this far. You should not have little children look at you coughing up blood and ask you if there's hope and have to say no. You should not have to lie to children when you tell them it gets better. That shouldn't be a lie. I did not realize quite how bad I had it until college. Until I was on my own. Because I was always told I was the rich kid. 
filthy rich. I should never complain about anything because I am the rich kid. Well, you know what? It's time to complain. It's time to complain to the world. America is hell. And maybe that's just the state of Texas. Maybe it is. If that's the case, then why hasn't anyone done anything? If there are states that have it better, why haven't they stepped in? There was a sign I saw today that said Texas had the highest rate of graduates of high school. I laughed, wondering how old that sign was, because it definitely wasn't during my time. When I graduated, many of my family didn't show up because they thought it was a joke. I said I was graduating with honors the highest ranking you can get. And they laughed. I was held back a year simply because my mom begged the teachers to do so. She didn't want me on my own out there. And at least at school, I had someone to watch over me. Be it my friends, be it the security cameras that never worked. I had someone, but on my own, in college, I would die. She said that. She said, if you live a week in college, then you are a miracle child. A miracle child for doing what is expected of anyone. She told me all the time it was a miracle I was alive. That I should treat every day like my last, because it could be. She told me I could never walk anywhere because I would get killed. So if I could not afford transportation for that day, I would have to stay home, despite it being down the street. Because I would die. I would get stabbed. I would get shot. She did not trust me on my own. The first time I was raped, I was told I should be lucky. He didn't kill me. At least it was only rape. That I should celebrate because he let me live. I should celebrate because I didn't get pregnant. I should celebrate because someone found me pretty. That I should thank him. I should go to my teacher the next day at school and thank him. Because he proved to me I'm pretty enough. And he let me live. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. You let me live. Despite all my mental conditions, Schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, anxiety, PTSD. Despite all of those, I'm only on medication for one of them. And that's anxiety. Every once in a while. I kind of take what I can get from my friends because it's the easiest one to get a hold of. I cannot afford any others. I cannot afford to see a doctor to prescribe them to me. I could die after this video. And no one would probably care or notice at least for a week. No videos would be posted. No one would tell fans anything, if the fans even noticed that my videos have stopped. 
and they probably write it as a drug overdose. I could have a knife still through my neck, and they would write it as a drug overdose. Because that's my neighborhood. And if there's a murder, then they have to investigate. And there's so many more important things to do. Cops do not feel safe in my neighborhood. They don't want to be there any longer than they have to be. Welcome to America. Everyone's dream. Everyone wants to be American. Where you keep telling yourself, it'll get easier. One day I'll have my own house and dogs and children and everything will be perfect. White picket fence. Or in reality, our new white picket fence is a busted up apartment. Our dreams are one day not worrying about money. One day being able to smile and genuinely be happy and not just be doing it because you're expected to. The dreams of Americans our child dreams. Children everywhere experience these things daily. Happiness and everything. Yet for us, they're dreams. Unreachable dreams. And people wonder why Americans are so obese. Because it's a dollar for a cheeseburger. Get twelve dollars for some horribly processed, badly taken care of, absolute junk salad. And that salad is probably the least nutritious thing on the menu. It's a place where most places do not serve ice cream or water. simple thing is water, our fruit, if they even serve them, they're deep fried. We have deep fried water here, and it's cheaper than a bottle of water. Vitamins are so insanely expensive. I've seen people holding one in one hand and holding food in the other hand and decide on the food because they'd rather eat at least be happy for their shortened lifespans because they will be shortened without vitamins but would you rather them be shortened even more by not eating I've seen children crying in hunger begging for food as their parents look on in tears and say I'm sorry this is all we have. I really hope people watch this video. People from around the world. Maybe the government. Other Americans. I hope they like they share this video, just proving this is how America is. This is the hell that is America. So other people can know. It is not all glitter and glam. It's absolute trash. I am not proud to be an American. I am not. I will never be proud to be an American. Until the day when... I can walk down the street and not have to worry about being stabbed. I don't think I will ever be proud to be an American. I do not think I will ever feel safe enough to bring a child into this world.
you haven't noticed, messing with my piercings is a nervous tick of mine. And looking around is also one as well. I'm really trying not to cry on camera for you guys. Because I feel like that won't change anything. <laughs> Tears don't change anything. If you're bawling your eyes out, they'll still laugh. They'll still think, oh, this kid is lying. They're just trying to get attention online. And, and they probably had the perfect life. Probably had everything they ever wanted. What do I know? I'm a white man. I'm rich. I'm the rich part of the United States. What do I know? What do I know? I have an apartment. Even if it's paid 100% by loans. What do I know? I'm only 60000 in debt. What do I know? I'm alive. I'm an American. God bless the USA. Think about that. And maybe we don't need to be sending help to Africa. We need to be sending help to the US because we have no hope here and we're all gonna die if we're lucky.